everybody, it's Matt Powers. I am a seed saver, an author, a gardener, a teacher, and a family guy, and I teach people all over the world how to live more regeneratively. And today I wanna to talk to you about lead, something that is very serious, something that is affecting people all over the place. It's an awful heavy metal, and I was interviewing one of the researchers that proved that heavy metal is linked to violence and violent crime. And the drop in violence and violent crime in America is directly linked with the drop in lead and other heavy metals being present in our environment and blood. So when we talk about these chemicals um, and we talk about how serious and how important they are to remove, this is the, the life trajectory of our children and our communities um, and ourselves. So we want to figure this out. We want to do this right. We want to communicate this information. So someone today was commenting on my aluminum one. They were like, aluminum's not that important. You know, we were really worried about lead. I wanted to make sure that I answered that question because it is serious and people are really worried about it. And there are people worried about aluminum and aluminum toxicity is a thing, but um, it's not as, as prevalent right now. So lead. So one of the things that I learned recently that, that lead is bioaccumulating in is mustard so brown mustard specifically but all the kale and brassica and everything they're going to be bioaccumulating or hyper accumulating as some people say uh tons of things they are a pioneer species they're early on in secession in many places uh, they're kind of like a weed in many places you know the invasive mustard and they're bioaccumulating lead among other things too but that lead, you could actually juice those plants because the mustard's a leafy green. You could juice that and you could do the same protocol we talked about yesterday with cucumbers. So what, what am I talking about? Well, you can be juicing plants that are indicators that we know bioaccumulate that heavy metal or toxin. And then we'd be juicing them, taking that juice, combining it with a specific amount of water so we keep the ratios in mind so that we multiply the ratio that we get, the amount that we get later on. So let's say it's one to four parts, one, one juice, uh, four parts water. So there's five parts to it. So it's 20% your solution. And then you get your test back result that it's, you know, seven parts per million. We're going to times that seven by five. So you're going to have 35 parts per million. Uh, that's just a made up number, I'm not using that in specific, but that's the idea behind this, is that you get the, use the water tests to get these numbers really efficiently, really quickly, because testing food, testing these things is gonna be harder unless you get the bio-nutrient meter, which I'm really excited for to be more widely available. I'm gonna pick myself up one, I think, after this Kickstarter is over, and showcase how it's used, and show what, what people are using with, because people are being able to figure out the nutritional quality, the toxicity, the pesticide load on their food in their soil, in their compost. It is, an, it is a fascinating device and it gives you a ton of information really quickly. So I really wanna use it, I really wanna showcase it, I wanna show what's possible with it, but for now, we really need to rely upon other testing methods and one of the number one ways that we have of testing is water testing and that, that's kind of ubiquitous, it's kind of everywhere. So that's why I, I recommend doing this adapted water test. And then when you get the results back, timesing it back so you know the actual the actual number and then there are of course databases online that we've talked about that you can check for the normal baseline number and see how much higher or lower or just normal your soil is through that plant and the bioaccumulation so if we're talking about lead we're going to be looking at a particular set of plants like i said mustard but also we're talking about other things like comfrey. So I've got some comfrey right here and most people don't think of comfrey as lead accumulation, but that's what Robert Keurig discovered when he was studying roots, demystifying roots and understanding roots. In his study, he found that lead is what, what they are really good at bioaccumulating. And obviously it has to do with the site, if there's lead present in excess. But the fact that it can bioaccumulate lead greatly is, is new information to a lot of people. And I want to put that out there. So I've got some comfrey here. I grow brassicas always. I love mustard. We can be growing these things. We can be pulling it out. We can be testing. 
And it's using these plants to pull things out of the soil to then compost them or combine them with other things. And with lead, this is what we're going to do. So lead is specifically lead is is e kind of easier to work with in some ways in certain things like radiation i mean they're gonna have to bring that out of that situation and they're gonna burn it and put into this ash this radioactive ash and it's gonna be stored but with lead we can combine it with phosphorus and iron and yes you could be taking literally like a soil amendment of phosphorus and iron you know a chemical reaction kind of thing or you could be growing phosphorus accumulating plants like daikon and iron accumulating plants um i have that written down i forget what it is right now but this is why i'm creating the charts this is why i'm creating protocols so you're like i have these 12 plants to choose from that is my planting guild you're gonna you know throw so them all you're going to maybe chop and drop them in place so that the Phosphorus and iron accumulating plants are paired with the lead accumulating plants and you're chopping and dropping and having them break down in place or you're raking it all up after you, you chop and drop it and you're hot composting it and combining it. But what you're doing is you are combining those things and making pyromorphite crystals and it is those crystals that are non-soluble, it's a non-soluble form of lead. And it, it's not bioavailable, it won't affect anything. And if you're like, wait, can we use this to change the water? Absolutely, people are using soil filters for water forever. So let's do like a biochar filter with sand, sand and biochar, but then you've got the phosphorus and the iron mixed in there. Well, that would literally make it so that it would be bound in the sand and biochar mixture as it passed through passively and you'd be able to clean that water. So we could be creating these filters, we could be cleaning these waterways up now, we cleaning up the soil now, we could be getting on top of this now. So when you're growing your comfrey, keep this in mind that there may be bioaccumulators, you know, to some people, or dynamic accumulators, right? That's the term that Robert Keurig's been trying to get rid of that he started. They, they, they gather things, but everything gathers things. And it's this, this amazing interplay between the soil and the plants that gives us this beautiful palette and spectrum of colors to paint new, new soils with and new health and new ecologies with. And when we realize what creates what, when we realize what binds with what, and we can recognize what plants are deficient in, when we can recognize what plants are there because there's soil deficiencies, all of these things, when they play together, we can plant the solutions. We can chop and drop and compost the solutions. We can DIY this. And that's really, in many ways, what permaculture is all about. It's about empowering the individual so that they can take control and they can solve these problems themselves on a home site, on a homestead, in a community, in a neighborhood, in a school, in a business. It's all about finding the solutions to our problems using nature and natural processes. So if you thought this was cool, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, if you want to support the creation of clear protocols and guides for dealing with all of these issues, and also mapping up the process for calcium, magnesium, and the cycles, you know, in the soil so that you can plant for that, you can set up for that, so that they all work together and you're making sure that it's all cycling properly. All of it. Then please support the Kickstarter. We have we have less than 60 hours left. I think there's less than 50 hours, maybe 40 hours when you see this but I think we've got less than two days left. So if you dig this sort of thing, please support Permaculture Soil Science and Solutions, the Kickstarter. There's books, there's courses, wherever you are with your relationship with the soil, you're gonna wanna check this out, you're gonna wanna support it. So click the link before it's too late because in just a few hours, it's gonna be over, all right? <laughs> I'm Matt Powers, grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And thanks for tuning in.